So just to start us off with some background on preparing for Farm to School Month, what even is Farm to School Month? And uh, the National Farm to School Network, who I've mentioned before, uh, was really uh, the leader in starting this movement for October as Farm to School Month. <clears throat> so back in 2010, they approached Congress and designated October as Farm to School Month. And then every year since then, um, we have been able to celebrate that across all 50 states and territories and so much so that their statistics from the last year were that there were 23.6 million kids participating in farm to school activities year round. And specifically in October, we see about 200 plus organizations promoting or hosting events around farm to school month. And farm to school month can be a variety of different things. It can be planting in a school garden, a taste test in the cafeteria, farm visits, harvest parties, and more. In Arkansas, we've seen great successes for October Farm to School Month from specific school districts, organizations, and agencies. Um, local harvest lunches have been a feature at Fayetteville Public Schools every year. Lots of other schools and childcare facilities have done things like taste tests to taste a local product and talk about cooking and nutrition with their students. We have seen garden nutrition and cooking lessons come across from great AmeriCorps members and other garden educators in schools. And we've seen um, farm visits as a unique way to celebrate October Farm to School Month. In Arkansas, we have been proclaiming October as Arkansas Farm to School Month since 2015. Um, and in this picture, you can see Governor Hutchinson proclaiming it last year at our 2019 celebration. The proclamations originally from 2015 to 2018 were at our School Garden of the Year contest um, announcements. Um, and then last year, we combined that with a Farm to School celebration. And this year, we are so excited to share how we're promoting October as Arkansas Farm to School Month. The theme that we've picked is celebrating local. Um, you know, from farmers who grow our food, educators and parents who are teaching right now in response to COVID, um, who are teaching about cooking, gardening, and nutrition, we know that together as a community, we're much stronger, um, and then that we are all a part of this local food system. So our theme is celebrating local. The three ways that we're saying that we're doing that would be eating local, growing local, or learning about local food. You can see that um, we have created a new graphic um, that we're excited to launch and share out. And I will be sure to share this PowerPoint as well as um, all the resources that we've created so far to help you all promote October Farm to School Month after um, we're finished. So this is what's going on calendar wise for us. And then I'll open it up for, to hear from all of you. So we will be having a proclamation for gov from Governor Hutchinson coming out in early October to kick us off. This year, he's going to be creating a video for all of us, and we will be sure to share that out on our social media and in our newsletter. And um, we, we would love for all of you to share that out as well. Um, and the theme, again, is celebrating local and really thanking everyone um, who, have, who has worked so hard during the pandemic from our farmers and teachers and educators to our essential workers and many more. We will also in early October be announcing our Arkansas Ground School Garden of the Year contest winners from 2020. So stay tuned for that. We're gonna be doing a video announcement for that as well. On October 14, the National Farm to School Network um, who normally hosts um, or promotes lots of farm to school things. This year, because we're all virtual, they are also gonna be hosting a virtual opportunity. Um, and I can go into that in just a little bit more after. Um, and then on the 28th of October, we're excited to announce that we are going to be hosting a virtual farm field trip that we would love schools and parents and students to attend and tune into. And stay tuned for some more information about a school garden grant program that we'll be announcing later this month. So these were the six categories um, that we will be deciding winners on for our Arkansas Ground School Garden of the Year contest. 
We have startup gardens, harvest partnerships, education gardens, community collaborations, overall garden winners, and then a new category this year is our champion category where previous winners were eligible to apply for continued funding, which means that the other five categories are open to five new schools this year. So the National Farm to School Network is hosting a movement meeting. Um, like I said, October 14th, it's from 12 to 2. It'll be on Zoom. I have linked the register link here at the bottom. So when I share this out, feel free to register. Um, they are hosting this um, and featuring Karen Washington, who's a food justice activist. We're gonna be having deep conversation um, and reflection around farm to school. It's com completely free um, and no prior farm to school knowledge is needed. But it will be a space where you can join in um, leaders and parents and students from across the nation to kind of come together collectively to celebrate October Farm to School Month. And then we are excited, like I said, to announce our virtual farm field trip. So on October 28th from 1.30 to 2.30 on YouTube Live, we are going to be celebrating with Heifer, Heifer Ranch um, by hosting this virtual farm field trip. And I know some of you joined our virtual farm field trip that we did back in May, right before school ended um, in response to COVID. And we saw so much excitement and success in that event that we wanted to offer another one this year. Um, so we're really looking forward to that coming up on October 28th. Um, in case of rain, it'll be on October 29th, but we are gonna be getting to ask their gardener and farmer um, lots of questions about what they're growing and we're also going to see some sneak peeks from across the entire state on how farm to school is happening all right so those that's what we have going on i'm going to go back to our calendar real quick just to recap it and then i'm going to turn off our, our video and see what what else all of you are doing for farm to school month so like i said stay tuned for a proclamation from the governor in early october um, same with our school garden announcement. On October 14th, the National Farm to School Network has that movement meeting. And on October 28th, we invite all of you to join us for a virtual farm field trip. All right, so I'm gonna stop sharing. We'd love to hear the answer to this question, like I've been sharing. How are you celebrating local? Or what plans are you thinking about coming up this October for Farm to School Month? Or what have you done in the past that you want to share about? Um, feel free to unmute yourself or type it in the chat. We can start to have more of a conversation and dialogue and learn from each other um, on what our collective plan is for our kids at Farm to School Month. So, uh, Tara, can I go? Please, please so, go ahead, Kristen. Yes, thank yeah, you. Um, so we have a couple things planned right now. I'm going to take a kind of two week block of the month and do taste testings during their typical um, snack times using produce that we've either purchased at a local market or that we grow in our actual garden um, because and I'm sure many of these other people are dealing with the same things I can't go in the school or do anything like that we're trying to have an outdoor celebration um, and the other thing that we're doing is um, every student in our school will plant some radish seeds on the second day of October I think that we decided that um, and then our virtual kids are getting take home kits that they can plant their radish seeds that same exact day and then we'll be able to harvest them at the end of the month and then the kids at home will cook with the radishes and then we'll cook and prepare another taste testing at the end of the month. Um, so they actually get to see the whole entire process from start to finish in one month. Thanks so much, Kristen, for sharing about that. And it was awesome. it's awesome hearing how you're adapting to virtual instruction as well and trying to bring in those virtual students and families too. Hi, Sarah. Um, I'm Anna with UAMS. And um, in my role, I support a lot of different school districts across Northwest Arkansas. And so we don't work exactly with one school or one district, but um, I'm actually working with Lindsay, our AmeriCorps service member, to create a series of flyers highlighting Northwest Arkansas farms. Um, we're going to include a recipe that uh, works with whatever produce they're growing at the time and um, hoping to reach a more wide audience just through some different flyers that we're going to send out. That's awesome to hear, Anna. Thank you so much for sharing that and so great to be featuring farmers as well. What an awesome idea. 
there's a couple who have come in the chat. So I'll, I'll let um, Sherry Long, who's that farm to school coordinator in Oklahoma, um, didn't come up with a solid plan this year because schools are just not open for any type of visit, which I know many of us are feeling might do something in the future. Um, they're planning to showcase dairy and have a milk mustache Monday and submit some students of drinking milk to show off their mustaches. So thanks Sherry for sharing that. Hi, Sarah. Hey, Joyce, go ahead. Hi, this is Joyce with OPA Food Management and I cover Missouri, Arkansas, Illinois, and Iowa. And Missouri and Illinois both are participating in the Great Apple Crunch um, that's coming up the middle of October. Does Arkansas have a similar event? And that is highlighting uh, and serving local apples uh, to the students in the school districts. Thanks, Joyce, so much for sharing that. In Arkansas, um, we don't have a statewide apple crunch like we've seen up in the Great Lakes or there's some others across the, the nation as well. And it's something I know that we've been thinking about as a program moving forward. Um, I don't know if anyone else on the line though is planning on doing an apple crunch or some sort of some sort of other local lunch or local taste test at the school. So I'm gonna pose that question out to all of you too. Hey Sarah, this is Shannon. Um, I'm at a CCE Learning Center and we've been participating in the Soybean Science Challenge, which is actually a program designed for high school students. But we like planted the soybeans and stuff and we've been harvesting them this week and we're planning on incorporating them in, in like our lunch and snack time things next month. So we're really excited about that. Hey Shannon, thanks so much for sharing that. That's awesome to hear that at your early care um, center that you're doing the soybean challenge. That's, that's really awesome to see. There's a couple more coming into from the chat. Um, Leah from, is talking about um, the, from DHS, I believe that they're choosing a jail or private school. Um, that they would go to to show off their gardens and make an announcement with with the media team. Um, so in the past, they've also showcased cooking in kitchens um, from schools. So that's really awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that. We got Alyssa jumping in saying that apple crunch idea is great. They may even borrow that for our school. Alyssa, keep us updated. We'd love to help support you in that too. Sarah? Yep, go ahead. This is Diana Bowen with U of A Cooperative Extension. I'm a county agent and I work with schools and someone else said their schools were not letting them in, but our school's not letting us in the building either. But one of the things we're doing with the second grade at one school, because they will let us do lessons outside. So we're gonna do a garden with the second graders and bring them outside to do all of our activities and all of our learning. This is my first year to be involved with farm to school programs, so I don't really have something planned for October, but we're hoping to get that started next month. And it's a way to keep programs going in the schools without actually going into the building. And you can social distance better outside. So it's, it's, that's what's working for us. Thank you so much for sharing that. And I think you're right, schools are, have such a range right now of if people are able to come in and teach or not. And so that's really exciting to hear that uh, there's this allowance for still outdoor learning and that you can help support that. So thank you for sharing that with us. We also have um, Deanna who jumped in to say, um, going into the elementary schools, uh, reading to, and reading to second grade a book about farmers. What a great way to celebrate Farm to School Month um, and showcasing what local products we are using in our meals all month. Brooke Long also jumped in to say they've done taste tests, had local farmers come to the school and help students plant. Um, at Carolyn Lewis, we're planning to celebrate the five year anniversary of our school garden in some way that's fun and our students will get to harvest lettuce and radishes. Also looking for more ideas. Kristen Taylor's jumping in as well to talk about um, 
the take-home cooking kit and produce from our garden along with a recipe for families to do at home. Lots of great um, events I'm, I'm hearing, books, readings, farm lessons, garden lessons, um, possibly even some taste tests or cooking uh, of food. What others, what other plans do people have? Feel free to unmute yourself or type it in the chat. Hey, Sarah, this is Joyce again. And I did a program this morning in our pre-K, one of our pre-K programs in one of our districts in cooperation with the University of Missouri. And I was so impressed with how that turned out. She read a book called Bread, Bread, Bread. So if you've never seen that, it's a great kids book to talk about, you know, baking products with wheat. Uh, she brought in wheat samples and then we supplied samples of products that they could taste test with wheat. Um, and this is one in a series of six um, and we'll cover dairy, vegetables, fruits, um, and protein as well and do samplings. And that is just hugely popular. The teachers love it, the kids love it, and it's a lot of fun. Thanks, Joyce, for sharing about that as well and, and how those lessons are kind of tied into the, the food groups, it sounds like, is what I'm hearing from you. Um, what a great resource. Speaking of resources, um, but feel free also to unmute yourself or type in the chat if you haven't had a chance yet to share your plans. One thing that we definitely want to support all of you in is um, what resources you need from us to help you promote Farm to School Month too. So we've been talking as a program about a media toolkit or promotion toolkit that will have some, um, I'm going to pause for just a second because Deanna said, I uh, have to jump off for COVID. We're so glad you're here. <laughs> COVID life. But um, we're as a program thinking about a media toolkit or promotion toolkit. And so would love to hear from all of you about some, what you might need us to help you create. Um, right now, what we have planned is some Arkansas Farm to School Month graphics, like what I showed in the presentation, um, specific to Farm to School Month. So those will be available to everyone um, in our media toolkit. We also have our virtual farm field trip graphic. Those will be in there. And we'll have some sample social, me social media language that you can just copy and, and paste. Um, we're also looking at maybe having a sample news release that you can tailor to your school or share out with your parents around October as Farm to School Month. What else do you need that we're not thinking of that would be really helpful and, and make your promotion of Farm to School Month easier? So I'll type that question quickly into the chat box and say resources, media toolkit, what other pieces would be helpful that we could create for you to promote Farm to School Month? While you're thinking, feel free to unmute yourself or type in the chat. Um, I will say that Rodney jumped in to say that every year we take our third grade students to Pumpkin Hollow where they get to see a pumpkin patch and take a pumpkin home with them. And so they're experiencing a local farm in Northeast Arkansas. I know one great resource we heard Anna Fisher sharing was about a farmer profile. Um, that's something that we could collaborate with them on, maybe make a, a sample farmer profile in this media toolkit as well. Heather, great question about a list of local farms. Yeah, we can definitely make sure to include information on how to find local farmers. Um, the main two places that I recommend people go to um, is the Arkansas Grown program, um, which you can just type in Arkansas Grown, um, and you can search for farmers in your county. You can search for farmers based on the type of product that, they, that you're looking for. Um, it has their contact information in, in that spot, so that's a great first step. You can also do basically the exact same thing with Arkansas Market Maker, um, so it's another resource to find local farmers. And I'll also share out um, we have a list that we've developed so far from last year's data of local farmers that have specifically sold to schools already. So I'll share out that list as well um, and we can make sure it's in our media toolkit. Great question. What else would be helpful for others thinking about media and promotion?
you know, we've heard some great examples from many of you today on here. We can compile a bit of a list of some other sample activities that you could be doing at your school or organization um, as an example. So we'll, we'll make sure to include that in the toolkit as well from all the great examples that we've heard. Got a couple more coming in the chat. Uh, video clips of local farmers to use with virtual students. That's a great idea, Heather. We'll put our brains together on that and see what we might be able to find. Um, and if we have some of local farmers too, pulling them in. And Kristen from Forest Park Elementary came in to say a great book is How Did That Get in My Lunchbox? The Story of Food by Chris Butterworth. Um, so that's a great one to check out as well if you're looking for a really simple, quick way to celebrate Farm to School Month and celebrate local this year. It's a great suggestion. We'll include that book suggestion on um, in our media promotion as well. Amanda, we're glad you're here. Thanks for joining. Um, oh, and yep, Kristen also highlighted that the St. Joseph Center, which is a Central Arkansas nonprofit, they are hosting virtual farm field trips um, right now. Since they normally have school field trips out at their nonprofit and urban farm, uh, they've transitioned to virtual. Um, so that's another option if your school or organization is looking to host or participate in a virtual farm field trip. That's a great suggestion. So I think a recap of what I've heard so far, but please jump in if there's more, is uh, just example ideas of what we could do, like a virtual farm field trip, books we could read, farmer videos um, that we could tag along with our educational lessons, um, as well as maybe an apple crunch or another way to celebrate farm to school months. So we'll have that sample piece in our toolkit. Um, as well as maybe a farmer profile that can be easily adapted to farmers that you're currently working with and the social media language and posters and, and more. Any final other resources? We definitely want to make sure that we're creating those and have those available for all of you. Um, any final thoughts? Sarah, I don't have links. Um, this is Amanda. Um, but there have been a lot of virtual field days that the extension has done that might just be educational opportunities that um, individuals could share. There's been like muscadine and you know various fruit and vegetable ones, but there's also been rice and soybeans and all of that. So um, lots of field days that the extension um, has hosted, just short videos about just Arkansas agriculture. So if kids were interested in that. Um, teachers could do, you know, a session on just what is a muscadine. <laughs> so, hey, that's awesome, Amanda. Thank you so much for sharing that. We would we'd love to include that in our toolkit as ways that uh, schools and parents can plug into Farm to School Month. So, thank you so much for that suggestion, and I'll I'll be looking for those on on how to include them in. Okay, sure. All right. Well, I. I want to make sure to make space if others have more ideas coming to mind, questions coming to mind around Farm to School Month um, or resources that you need. But I also want to honor everyone's time who has come so far. Uh, I'm going to do a final poll for all of us in our network conversation and announce that the next Farm to School um, Arkansas Farm to School Network conversation in October that we'll be hosting is going to be on goal setting and creating action steps. Um, so looking at your school or child care facility and seeing where you're at and, and making what is your, your goal or action step for the next year. And then in November, we will have one on local procurement. Um, so stay tuned for those. And I'm going to open the poll so you'll see it pop up in just a second on your screen. And you should, there's five questions, just really quick, multiple choice. Um, if you can quickly fill that out. And if you don't have any other questions, thank you so much for joining today. 
stay on if you have additional questions that you want to ask me or or hear from others um, but that's that was our uh, September preparing for Arkansas Farm to School Month Network conversation. We're so thankful for all of you joining and the feedback that you gave. Uh, thank you so much for being here.